All right, good morning. It's uh, Thursday morning, July the um, uh, 13th. Ooh, good thing it's not Friday. Mm. But anyway, I am out at a new pit, of course, in Unit 40. I'm in the northwest pit that's uh, shown in Unit 40. And uh, it looks really, really nice. It's a southwest wind blowing, I do believe. Clear water, really nice and clear water. Got the typical weed thing growing up along the bank. Although the weeds don't seem to grow out quite as far, which leads me to think that maybe it drops off a little deeper. But this is the boat ramp. I don't know if it shows on the video or not. You can definitely see the end of it. Oh, there's a little bluegill. Hi, buddy. Thanks for coming and welcoming me to your new pit, or to your home. Um, I'll see how deep it is when I launch my little go-kart bass boat thing here. But the, the boat ramp is kind of like in between both ends. There's one end, and right over there is a little arm that goes off that away. So definitely we'll be having fun checking that out. Clear water, clear water. And then it goes on down there. Pretty much it's a straight shot. I see that it kind of like goes back, but I don't, that's not an arm, I don't believe. Um, got some trees that were knocked over into the water somehow or another. But man, you talk about clear water. Goodness gracious. Anyway, um, last night, we haven't had rain for a long time. Long, long time of any consequence. <laughs> Last night we got at least five inches of rain. That's all the, the rain that my rain gauge records. So it definitely definitely got five. Maybe it, we got more than that in Pittsburgh. This is out around uh, it's a little south and west of West Mineral. And it doesn't look like they got quite the same amount of rain that we got. I checked the radar last night when I was going through it. It's kind of an isolated thing. So I, anyway, there's another chance of rain tonight, later or early this early Friday morning. So there were clouds out here this morning, and uh, now there aren't. And it is 11:17. So I, I'll probably fish till like 2, 2:30, 2 something like that. Get you an idea what this pit looks like. Uh, other than what you can see from the bank right here. And see if I can catch any fish. I don't know. We'll find out. Anyway, here we go. Well, there's some little guys. Kind of like sitting on beds. I think they're awfully young to have beds, though, I think. Cool. Yeah, I haven't even left the boat once yet. <laughs> that I will. I'll go ahead and get this paddle. Let's see how far down this water goes. It does drop off pretty nice. Yeah, it's only probably about three feet at the very most. All right, so this is not one that's been graphed so you can see how deep it is. But there is the boat ramp, and right around the corner from that is all of this. Look at this. Nice, I guess, a beaver hut right there. And then some more trees that are over into the water, overhang right there. And I've been really going over what should I use, what should I use. And I came up with, I'm going to use my jackhammer, uh, chatterbait. And first cast got hung up on the tree that's down in the water right there. And that was the end of that. But this really drops off right here along this bank. It just goes straight down. So I'm going to, I put on a different chatterbait, one that's more subdued in color. 
And what I like about a chatterbait is you can use it like a jig, but it has that little extra something about, you know, when you pop it off the bottom, it has that little chatter thing going on with it. Good grief, what a lousy cast of you. Oh, wow. Man, came rushing right out and got it. And there's one following it. There's four, five following this guy. Holy cow. Man, unbelievable. <laughs> he said, mine before anybody else. Wow. Check that out. There were five bass just about the same size following it. I guess I made the right call on what to use, right? I'm going to get a picture of this because I haven't photographed any of my fish here lately. That's a good way to start it off. Basically, that was my first cast. Wow. And it's... Um, uh, a 16 incher, not bad. Thank you, buddy. Good grief. Oh. And again, there were two following that one. Man, they're marauders. This is a pretty big pit. It's, um, like I say, it doesn't show how deep it is, but. It's, uh, it looks bigger on, on the field map app than it does in the pamphlet. I picked the, I was trying to pick the smallest one because I got such a late start because the other options to go to in this unit are bigger, bigger pits. Like bass boat size, bigger pits. The visibility in this pit is probably 12 feet. I'm not kidding, with the sun shining out, I can see way on down comes down here way on down at least 10 feet cool another turtle oh ha another one not sure how well this guy's hooked Kind of down deep. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, if I remember correctly, I really did something about a rod holder so that I could. Man, it definitely wasn't going to come off. Pretty fish. I imagine there was probably a school of bass chasing him too. <laughs> so, there's the boat ramp. This is where I caught it. Down a little deep off of these branches here. I think maybe I'll be using this here uh, chatterbait. Wow. Look at what I'm passing over. Wow. This is about 20 feet out from the bank. That tree right there. Man. I used my crankbait through there. I got lucky. All right. So the bait that's been doing it is this chatterbait with a bronze blade 
and the yum watermelon candy uh, craw trailer. Yum. Crispy craw trailer. Here's a little structure that's you have to fish with or around. That, that's the far part of this, the end of this that shallows out. Got some nice branches and stuff in the water here. It drops off pretty good. It's um, probably about according to how long it takes for my jig to get, or the chatterbait to hit the bottom. It's at least 10 to 12. So it seems like this is a pretty deep hit. At least this end of it is. The sexy shad. Oh, followed by another one. Wow, that's a nice bass. Hit the sexy shad right as I was reeling it. That's about a 15 incher. Not too shabby. Wow, look at the belly on this dude too. Man, nice. Thanks, buddy. So that was just, I figured just to save time. And since I know that they like my, the sexy shed, the 6XD striking sexy shed color crankbait. I was just using it to cover ground because I got a lot of ground to cover. And man, it hit it just like really quick. And uh, there's the boat ramp. And if you go to the left, it was like right out here in this area. Just starting to come up the far bank, the east bank of this thing. I think it's the east. Covering ground. Tossing the steam. All right, so getting ready to explore this little arm of this thing right over there. I'm gonna turn far enough. So there's the boat ramp, and right around here is this seems to be a pretty long arm. Find out how deep it. Oh, hello, turtle. That almost looks like a snapper. Um, find out how deep it is and how far back it goes. If there's any fish. So I've made it to the back, almost. And it's, it's surprisingly deep. I mean, you can see the bottom right here. But it's at least five feet deep, maybe six. And I would imagine, you know, best spawning time or whatever, this would probably be a place where they would come back in and Do just that. So far on the main part of the pit, it's definitely it, the sides just drop off. I'm not sure how bass would spawn in a place like that where you don't really have any flat area anywhere that they could uh, use to spawn. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a net. Stop the trolling motor. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. And look where the lure is. Wow. Wow. Yeah, baby. Let's see, I think I'm gonna get another picture. This is a really nice bass. At 116. I think
think it's probably another 16 or 17 incher. I do believe it feels like at least a two pounder. Yeah, almost a 17 incher. Wow, thank you, dude. Thank you. Man. So, as I was saying, this arm has no, no kind of structure in it at all. Just a nice little deep trough through here with some weeds growing up. And that's where it hit, kind of like just down deep right in this area. It's a little bowl shape. Oh, grass. See, that's that's why I love fishing this thing. Because you'll hit grass and you'll think, oh boy. So it keeps you thinking that, you know. And I think that's a good feeling to have when you're using a lure. Oof, if I can talk. Is thinking that the next thump or added weight is going to be another fish like that. So I'm coming out of the mouth of that arm that I was just in. This is a little point that goes out. Didn't drop off quite as fast as the rest of the bank around it does. Oh my goodness. That was huge. Something, uh, maybe it could have been a beaver. As big as that was, and me not seeing, because there are there is a beaver hut around down in there somewhere. I forget exactly where. Or is this a really huge catfish? Probably. Damn! There it is again. Holy cow! It's got to be a beaver. <laughs> That's got to be a beaver. Okay, so there's the boat ramp. And now if you go to the right when you launch your boat from the boat ramp, this is the long arm that you have ahead of you. This side definitely is a more gentle sloping side. I'm probably in about 8 to 10 feet of water, maybe at the very most, 8 feet for sure, about 20 feet off of the bank. So I'm just going to keep it on cruise control and throw my crankbait ahead of me. Oh, it looks like it's going back to deeper along the bank here now. Just where that point is uh, coming out from that one arm that I was in. Yeah, because this drops off a little bit deeper, it looks like. I can't see the bottom like I was able to just a minute ago. All right, so I've been sitting here thinking about it. I'm not going to come back and do a part two. I'm just going to assume that there is incredible bass fishing all the way down to the end of this. Um, the bank slopes off steeper on this side. Well, it looks like it slopes off just about the same on either side. And obviously, you know, using a deep diving crankbait, just going on down the shore, uh, flipping these things. I'm just using the chatterbait with this crawdad trailer. Um, is going to be effective. And so, and I know that there's nice bass in here. My goal really is not to just keep fishing a spot. It's to show you what each of these pits has to offer. And there's no doubt about it. This pit has a lot to offer. Man, um, it's definitely one that I will come back to when I'm all done documenting all of the pits. Try not to go to anyone twice unless I really absolutely have to, like um, when I got rained out at one time, you know. 
but uh, anyway, I'm just going to fish this back because I want to get this thing edited and uh, hopefully grill something up tonight. Ooh. What it was, it would have been a fish. But anyway, does that look cool or what? I love the bleached out tree limbs. So they would be underwater if this is at normal capacity. Yeah, me, so you know that this is the end of the video. <laughs> Man, what a cool pit. Lots of structure in parts of it. Other parts, not so much. But it didn't really seem to matter as far as, um, you know, where I was catching fish. Because just as long as you're fishing, I guess they're going to be biting. But this is a great pit. It's in the northwest corner of Unit 40. It has a pretty good boat lock. It just doesn't go out very far. So you really want to be careful with that because when you get to the end, it drops straight off. But, you know, something like a John boat or something like that, um, it's lightweight that you can push off your trailer the rest of the way, just kind of get it in the water a little bit. Um, this would be a really good place to, to come. Man, I was thinking, I'll do this as a two-parter. This day one, part one, and then come back tomorrow. But I got too many pits to explore. And like I say, the main thing is I'm trying to give you an idea of what these pits have to offer individually um, and as far as bank fishing goes there's not a lot of area that you can really fish from the bank but if you can if you come down here do know that it drops off so it's not like you're going to be fishing in sh you know shallow water as far out as you can throw i imagine this probably like a lot of the pits has pretty good catfish in it um, it has something big in it <laughs> right down there and then right around the corner there's this really aggressive school of bass nice ones so it was a fun day real fun day glad i was able to come out here um tomorrow well like i say tonight early tomorrow morning friday morning it's supposed to rain again but i'm going to come back out here and try another one of these pits the thing is they're all like really good sized pits and I probably won't be able to fish all of the pit that I'll be at tomorrow, but hopefully you'll get an idea of what it's like. So I hope you enjoy these. Thank you for liking, subscribing, especially uh, comments. I haven't got too many comments, so I guess no news is good news. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And if you have an opportunity to get out, if you live in this area, Come enjoy this incredible resource we have here, the Mine Land Wildlife Areas of Southeast Kansas in Crawford and Cherokee County. Um, and if you're out this way, be sure you stop by the Strip Pit Bait and Tackle Store. It's on uh, um, one, uh, 126. Yeah. Anyway, I'll post the link in my in the comments below. Um, this is a great place. has uh, Lots of fishing gear, lures and rods, reels, and something cold to drink. So uh, stop by there, check it out, support them. You know, bait, bait stores, bait and tackle stores out in the country. You got to love it. Uh, but anyway, um, thanks for watching. If you happen to have some children uh, and they're bored because it's summertime, take them fishing. There's uh, lots of these pits you can fish from the bank if you don't have a boat. And... I think most of these pits have pretty good fishing in them. So until later, thanks again. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.